Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome back to Fallout New Vegas Lonesome Road, where you join me down here, deep inside the ruins, albeit they're still mostly working ruins, of the Ashton Missile Base. We've just completed the Fearsome Elevator, which in the end, you know, after all I did and put into energy weapons and guns, we actually did with a pneumatic buzzsaw thing on my wrist. So that's just flipping perfect. It's a great weapon, this. It's a genuinely really, really damn good weapon. One that very often gets a little bit overlooked, because, yeah, by the time you come to Lonesome Road, you've got all your own favourite big old explosive guns. And there's the Psycho. The Psycho's gone. That's a shame. If I'd remembered I was in the effect of that Psycho, I probably would have rushed straight to the one enemy in this area, because this area, for the time being, is a little bit on the quiet side. It's okay for the minute, with one little exception. I'm going to say little, quite a big exception. There's one sentry bot guarding a uh, nice little auto dock, so... Uh, would be nice to be able to clear him out if I can. But first, nice quiet area means lots of good looting opportunities. Though I suspect I looted some of this at the end of the last part, given it does appear to be a little bit on the empty side. Not all of it though, because I'll gladly take sensor modules. In fact, that's exactly what I happen to need. Absolutely flipping perfect. I'll get myself a couple more satchel chargers. By any chance, by the way, Edie, is it a new day? And can I have some new satchel chargers yet? Sometimes it's easy to lose track of time in the divide. Nope, no options available, so sadly not. Though obviously outside of uh, hardcore mode, there's nothing to stop you like literally just waiting 24 hours and just farming satchel charges off ED forever, but never mind, let's not do that. Ignore the giant explosion, it's absolutely fine, this place is safe. Okay, probably, I think so anyway. Also ignore all the warning klaxons and the smoke and the, the fire. As I was just saying, everything's fine in here. This is all just for flipping show. So basically, yeah, this is a three-level base. Nothing too dramatic going on here for the most part. Yeah, just one sentry bot in a med lab. So I just need to go and find him. I can't remember where he is exactly, but I'll probably remember when I find him. Ah, but first, arguably a fair bit more importantly, yeah, up on the top floor here, we've got a hard-locked terminal. Can't open that right now, but with a programmer's digest, I certainly can. Marvellous, been keeping that specially, because in here, we got something very special indeed. So, door opened with that, and inside the little hard locked away room here, we do indeed have, conveniently, a Sparky iBot upgrade number 34ED. Open that up, grab ourselves the, well... I'll always help myself with some scrap electronics too. Ooh, scrap electronics and a sensor module. Well, flipping perfect. And the circuit board, of course. So, this one's actually good. You see, as you go along, it's not just always ED. Sometimes you get stuff as well. So now, both me and ED get plus two damage threshold. I will gladly take damage threshold. Very, very gladly indeed. So that is the third of the five. Right flipping there. And actually, you know what? ED, I don't even need your workbench for once. Because I've got one right flipping here. You might have also noticed for a second there, I could have actually made my own auto-inject stim pack. Yeah, that's Science 75 sensor module and stim pack. So, uh, I can only make those right now while under the influence of the programmer's digest. But yeah, if you want to make your own, that's absolutely fine. Oh, and rocket canisters, don't forget them. You'll probably notice, by the way, of course, like in many storms in this DLC, basically the game is just begging for you to make weapon repair kits, if that's what you want to do, with scrap metal and wonder glue and more scrap electronics. And I think I saw some wrenches over there. There was a supply cupboard right here. Yeah, there's scrap metal. There's some duct tape right there. Yeah, this DLC really wants to make sure in all the supply cupboards you've got what you need to make weapon repair kits. But that's fine. Thanks to the fact I'm using a limited number of weapons and I've got ED, we should be okay. Ah, here we are. Medical room. And uh, I've already... No, don't... Why would you open the door right now? Right, while you do that, I'm going around the back for a second. All right, if Edie's going to flipping open the door and start this fight, I guess I'll just go around the back and see if we can just hit this guy with this and the... That is not doing much aside from making a horrible, horrible noise. But screw it. He seems to be focusing on Edie, not me. So I guess we'll just give it a go. Okay, never use this tool against robots. It makes a really horrible grinding noise, but okay, good. You're dead. That's bloody convenient. I'll take the flipping uh, rockets. Oh, of course, one thing I forgot to point out earlier. Missiles, you can basically convert those into rockets as well. So you may want to grab those rather than selling them potentially. And electron charge packs too. Why the bloody hell not? Because yes, of course, the advantage of... Ah, good. That wasn't explosion. That was just you opening a shop for me. Better and flipping better. Yeah, the advantage, of course, of uh, energy ammo is basically orange ammo can be converted into other forms of energy ammo, which makes it very, very flexible and useful. Speaking of which, I think I've got stuff to sell. 
Right, stuff to get rid of. I think I'm going to get rid of the chainsaw, because I've got the little uh, industrial hand thing. So the chainsaw feels a bit pointless, and it's very heavy, so we'll get rid of that. Arc welder can probably go at this point. In all fairness, 49 with the bonus damage versus robots. I can probably do better than that with just day-to-day -day stuff. So I'm going to sell that as well for a bit more money, just to clear out the space. Oh, and bloody convenient. Programmers die just right here in the desk. Not sure if that's a guaranteed spawn. I think that's random chance. And second, auto dog. Very bloody convenient. So obviously, if you're passing one by, always get yourself a physical. And further along, right here by the main room, behind an average locked door, in an average lock, sorry, that's uh, average science locked, I mean, uh, in an average lock locker back here, we have got a healthy bunch of auto-inject stuff, some meals, some money, more stimpact, and indeed, if you want that sort of thing, the US Army combat armor. So, hang on, just remind me how that compares to what I've got here. So I'm down to DT-17. Okay, but explosives plus 10. That's DT-16, guns plus 3. Okay, we'll leave this for the time being, but yeah, I need to potentially look at repairing this at some point or other. Repairing it with the terminal is going to cost 12,000, unfortunately, and ooh, that's going to be difficult to get to. Now, I think I might be able to repair this thing with basic riot gear, but I need to actually bloody find some first. Anyway, that's that level taken care of. May as well drop down to the next one over here. There's also stairs if you feel like being less dramatic. But at this point, we should be pretty clear and simple just to uh, explore around, to be honest. There's not a huge amount. Don't worry, that explosion's supposed to happen. Right, yeah, that's the stairs, in fact, right there. So basically, I just came exactly back to where I would have come if I'd taken the stairs. So all of that drama was completely pointless. This second tier's got basically nothing on it. I believe this is just a store cupboard right here. Yes, indeed, just a store cupboard. So, dotted in here, there might be something useful... I guess, some useful crafting stuff. There's scrap electronics. Always take that. Oh, speak of the bloody devil, riot gear. Oh, well, I'm glad I came into this cupboard now. Now, please tell me I can actually repair advanced riot gear with I flipping can. <laughs> okay, I'm extremely glad I came into this cupboard. I'm very sorry. I owe this cupboard an apology. And with that done, it's just time to head pretty much straight down to the bottom floor. Now, this area is empty for now, but a whole bunch of the bloody tunnelers are going to pop out as I start running through. Honestly, best thing I can think of doing is just sprinting straight through it and totally ignoring those guys. So, go, go. Yeah, they're going to pop out right now. I should be able, especially if I just kind of throw them off by jumping over some scenery, to get to that door. Yeah get to that door before they actually get through, and they cannot follow me through the load zone. Beautiful. Don't do that! <sighs> right, ED. Bloody liability. Still, let's get over there with some flipping. Yep, there we go. Stagger, 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 stagger. Oh, there's a bloody another one over here. No, no, not me. Not go away. Oh, dear. Okay, so on this occasion, the industrial hand didn't work so well. Though, on the plus side, sedate something by plane instead. Right, Edie, wait here and don't cause trouble, please. Oh, it might be a bit late for that, to be honest. Oh, yeah, I think they're already coming. Right, need something better than that thing. Shoulder mounted, that'll do the flipping job. Get that out. Hello over there! And just get you down in a flipping, when I say in a hurry... You've taken quite a few of these bullets. That's all right, though. Oh, no. Okay, go into Vats now. Vats will do a good job here. And, yeah. Two rounds. That did not do much, did it? Now I need to reload. Right, go, 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 go. Oh, you're going for me as a priority, aren't you, you bastard? That's fine. Okay, there we go. I only mostly died. It's okay. Bloody tunnelers. On the plus side, got some cave fungus off that one. Nice. And as we're temporarily out of trouble, heal myself with the meals ready to eat, not actual stim packs. So I think there, there might be one more, but we've cleared out these floors, at least a couple of them. Right, and also, first aid kits. Oh, that's better. There we go. And actually, we can loot here. I was planning to just basically sprint straight through this area. But uh, you know what? As we've already cleared out two of them, may as well loot properly. There might be... A third one further upstairs. I'm trying to... Yep! There's definitely a third one further upstairs. Right, just see if we can get it on the corner. These bloody things are so bloody fast, though. Oh, there's at least two more, in fact. Right, okay. Plan B. Right, flare gun, activate. Light off. And round here. Oh, yeah, there we are. Now, do I have a good shot at both of you? 
Yes, I do. And yes, I do. Right. Oh, no, I don't. Okay. Fine. One of you is... Oh, no, both of you. Okay, I've managed to hit both of you. So they're both now fleeing because he was caught in the blast radius. They're fleeing downstairs, giving me plenty of time to get out of here before they recover. Boom. Hopeville, High Road, Ashton, tiny cracks in the earth. Nothing compared to the road carved ahead. Before you, this is the edge of the divide. Ahead lies your work. The history you burned in the earth. What you brought to the people here. And I had nothing to do with this. Just tell me what flipping happened here, alright? Please. You delivered a package. Had markings that matched those in the divide. Not all. But enough. Military markings. From some place the bear had savaged in the west. Maybe seeing those markings on it reminded you of home. Made you carry it. And unfortunately, I don't actually recall said package, but yeah, let's go into a bit more detail here. You said I brought it from the West. It was a device. A detonator. One I'd never seen before. Or heard before. You carried that thing to the Divide. I know, because I followed you as you walked the road. Watched you do it. You brought it here, to the community you built. And you are responsible for what happened after, when the device opened, started to speak. When it did, the Divide answered back. Those missiles you've seen, buried in their silos. They exploded beneath the ground, cracked the landscape. Sand, ash, the dead. The Divide skies became a graveyard. And we finally have a flipping answer there, or at least a straight answer has been hinted at before. I brought a package here that was some form of detonator that caused the missiles to go off and destroyed the divide. And if you saw all of this happen, how exactly did you survive, Ulysses? Should have died there. But now that I know you live, the machines here saved me. I was the only survivor. Or thought I was. Your package, the message inside, awoke medical machines, close to the one that shadows you, began to build themselves, then others. They only take what parts they find in the divide, never roam beyond it. Can't even leave the silos without a human to shadow, like hounds. Maybe they saw the flag on my jacket, thought I was of America. If so, History saved me. A sign. And fun thing, that's not just actually a bit of flavour text. Uh, when you run into him, if you do actually decide to fight Ulysses, he does actually have an iBot that's basically a medical iBot, the only function of which is to actually heal him. So, uh, yeah, part of his backstory actually shows up in the final fight against him, which is very, very cool indeed then. So, tell me, this package and the markings, any more details on the detonator? Machinery. Simple on the outside. Computer parts. Inside, more complicated. Was the only time I'd heard a machine speak in the divide. The only machine with a voice. And why exactly would I have brought it here? Because yes, I don't actually seem to recall. There actually was a really interesting debate going on in the comments in a previous part of this series, if I recall correctly. Um, and possibly it was the very end of survival, I can't recall now. But uh, yeah, about like exactly how much of an amnesiac the courier is, because the courier has definitely forgotten some stuff, but also seems to be deeply familiar with parts of their past in other ways. So exactly what the courier can and can't remember is possibly just up for interpretation and whatever the player chooses to imagine, really. It certainly seems a little bit inconsistent sometimes. I've walked the east. You've walked the west. More than I have. Circle Junction. Reno. Vault City. Word of you at Fort Aradesh. Fort Abandon. Even further west than that, Brahman drives on the big circle. Whatever you saw out there wasn't enough to make you stay. Maybe the markings on the package reminded you of the road home. 
And there we are, there's the fourth bit of information about my past, and uh, yeah, to be honest, I don't think I'm responsible for this. If I just brought a package here, how exactly is my fault? And now we're starting to get into uh, the real big question that underpins Ulysses in this whole DLC. If you had been there when it happened, if you had seen the divide break, you would know it. You carry death wherever you go. If the Mojave doesn't know it yet, it will. What happened here can happen again. You already proved it. What you did in Ashton, the silo there. And now we start getting into the real core message underneath this DLC, the reason Ulysses is doing what he's doing. Now we'll get into a bit more detail about this later, but yes, basically the core is you are a courier who doesn't question, a courier without any form of a conscience. And even if you haven't done it yet, he's going to be proved right. You're going to deliver a chip that's going to wake up an army down the line in the main game if you haven't already done it yet. Or maybe it's proved he was uh, already right and you just know it if you actually came here after doing that, which very likely the vast majority of players actually will. And then again, of course, I've just done it again. I just saw a lever at the Ashton missile silo and I just flipping fired a missile because I just like pushing buttons when I see them. Didn't stop you though. Like carrying the chip to Vegas. Old world death in your hand. Pieces of the old world like that just need someone careless enough to take them where they need to go to do their killing. And indeed, I'm going to claim I'm not to blame for any of that, but can't help but notice, yeah, there is a little bit of a repeating pattern going on here. All these roads that you walked, these packages that you carried, think it wasn't your choice? Of course, it was your choice. You could have stayed in the Mojave, but you chose to come, couldn't let be, not in you to let go came for no other reason than you were curious, restless, always have been, had to know the why of it. Now, I'll show you. And now we get into the really fascinating story bit of this DLC, because the logical answer to him is, well, if I hadn't carried it, somebody else would. Except, of course, now Ulysses starts getting into the big, interesting, kind of meta-narrative bit of this DLC, which is, his point is, you are unique. You didn't need to come here. In fact, quite frankly, it's madness, the idea that you freely chose to walk into the Divide when you weren't trapped here. And that's when it becomes really important, not just um, to the actual gameplay, but to the plot, that at any point, you can walk straight back out of the Divide. You didn't need to do this. You are the sort of mad bastard... Ah, you see, I even named the character appropriately. You are the sort of mad bastard who decided to freely keep walking through the Divide, despite everything you've seen. You are a unique anomaly whose curiosity and drive is so great that you're willing to walk through everything you've done to deliver a package even though you've no idea what it is or why you're actually flipping doing it. Basically, the whole reason you're doing this DLC, the whole reason Ulysses is telling you all of this, is he's testing you. And by simply completing the DLC and continuing to try and complete the DLC for no clearly obvious reason, you're proving him right. And I just love that. It's a beautiful, beautiful story. So yes, indeed, you're angry because I accidentally brought an explosive to the device. By the way, by the way, mad bastard, you're kind of doing it again right now. You're currently delivering something else for no well-explained reason. Accident. Ignorance is a choice. The chip. A choice. As for anger, it is what I carry for the dead. And all of that come here. And let's see if we can find a bit more about Ulysses' past here. Go on then. The Divide Explosion. What exactly did I do that's annoyed you so flipping much here? My family. My tribe lives. Its history. Died long ago. Fell under the shadow of the bull. Consumed by another symbol. No. This isn't about family. Or any common blood. It's blood shared by acts, not by chance. And now we're getting into a sort of weird, I'm a courier and I need to police the other couriers sort of line of reasoning there. Okay, so if you're Legion, are you angry because I destroyed the Divide supply line instead of you or something? The supply line? The artery for the West? I have seen the blood of NCR at Legion hands many times. I carry no hatred for duty, if that's 
what this was. The divide was more than that. It's people more than that. Now, to be honest, so far Ulysses hasn't actually given us a particularly straight answer for why the divide was so bloody special. Because he seems incredibly dismissive of every other society in the wasteland. But in all fairness, that's mainly because all the other ones seem to be in some way built out of the past. His only real reason for loving the divide so much is it was new. So I'm not really sure why he's kind of, you know, not behind House. I guess maybe House is trying to restore Vegas and the idea of restoration doesn't appeal to you because he wants something built fresh out of nothing. But... In all fairness, we don't really get much of a view as to what was so special about the Divide, aside from just Ulysses' obsession with the idea of building something afresh. But go on, maybe we can tease a bit more out of him yet. If you think I'm responsible for this, what's your tie to the place? The community that was once here, and the package you brought, both had markings of the Divide, markings of America. You've seen the marks. The symbol, as early as the Hopeville silo, maybe, carried it etched on your weapons. The divide, its buildings, its people, were built around those same markings, surrounded them here. Markings like the flag on my back when I followed a yellow road to the divide those years ago. I saw the symbol I wore all around me. An old world symbol, strong to survive here, its people strong, outlast the bear, outlast the bull, promise of something better. Kaiser was right to want it dead, NCR was right to want to rake their claws in it. Seeing it changed me. Just the seeing Hoover Dam changed Kaiser and the NCR. Seeing it end changed me too. And again, we don't exactly have a huge amount of detail at the divide. It's probably the only weak point about the plot, because I love the plot in Lonesome Road. But the only real weak point is, we never really quite get an entire picture of why Ulysses was so obsessed with the divide civilization above all others. It's all a bit weak, like it's, it's strong. And it might outlast the NCR, though we're not really 100% sure how or anything. I mean, I guess technically the NCR and the Legion are both pretty flimsy, so, you know, a strong, small society that was self-confident could potentially outlast them. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's the answer to all of society's problems. But once again, let's just try and tease a tiny bit more out of him. So you believed in this place, what it once was. Go on, Ulysses, give us at least a tiny bit more information. There was hope here. Another chance. A new nation stirring to life, a place I could have set my flag. Not the America of old, but something larger than the tribes of the East, something larger than the houses of the West, something better. The divide could have bridged both like Hoover Dam. Now like the dam, it's too covered in blood to see what it could have been. You gave life to this place. I followed a your road here, saw the divide. You led me here so that I could see. Then you brought it to an end. And that's pretty much as close to a full answer as we're going to get. Kind of Ulysses views it as it could have been a link that could have formed like peace between the East and the West that otherwise are very culturally alien. To be honest, I feel like that's a bit of a false hope. I feel like, yeah, uh, as he just said, the East was going to want to destroy it and the West was going to want to eat it. So, uh, yeah, not sure that was going to work out even if it hadn't been for the nukes, but whatever. So, yes, is this revenge then, Ulysses? My history isn't revenge or hate. The road that brought us both here isn't about that. It's about the message you carried. The one in that package, whether you knew it or not. The message that one can kill a nation, can kill a symbol, and all that gather beneath its flag. I don't blame you for the divide. I blame you for what you made me see. Now you will see what you brought to the Mojave, and that will be my message 
to you. Okay, this is suddenly getting a bit more on the ominous side. Any chance you're willing to give me a bit more information? The nations of the Mojave, cracked and broken as the divide, its people the same. I have walked at Kaisar's command across the east into the west, far enough to know Kaisar's word did not drive me, far enough to see the end. You've seen it. No courier, whatever their flag, can ignore it. Why you didn't stay in the West. Why you wondered. There's no future in the bear or bull. The bear is diseased, barely clings to life. And the bull, when the legion reaches the sea, it will turn on itself and die. Killing one will end both. And you made me see how one could do it. Your ignorance, carelessness, can be used with a purpose. Yep, more and more flipping ominous than marvellous. And I'd say you learnt the wrong message. Not really sure what message you were supposed to learn from that, or whether you learn a message. You gotta you learn a lesson or deliver a message. But whatever, you know what, screw it. Mad Bastard isn't known to, you know, be the brightest tool in the shed. He occasionally just mixes his metaphors. Really? Who's to say the truth of it? You? No. You walked from this. Turned your back on it. Now you and others will answer for it. I'll start with the West. Let that burn. Then, if the East falters after, I'll bring the Divide there as well. Burn away the flags. Begin again. Fair enough. Now, yeah, pretty obvious threat of uh, nuclear destruction there. And you wanted me to come to the Divide? Go on then, let's get to the flipping point. Your roads are not done. Haven't walked it full yet. Not nearly enough. The way ahead and below leads to the heart of the Divide. And there, you and I, we'll have an ending to things. Okay, marvellous. And any chance you want to tell me more, or I'm guessing this is probably where you stopped talking to me? I already heard you once, long ago, and loud enough for history to hear. Tired of your messages. Still, curiosity drove you this far. Let's see what else it can do. Ah, now we got a bit more we can learn from him yet. You made a promise not to kill me. Go on, tell me a bit more about that. We got told that last time. Kaisar's orders. Some time before, I realised the why of it. Wasn't just you. All couriers. No telling how many were legion. Maybe all of them. Wasn't sure about you until the divide. All the NCR burning. That much death. It bears the mark of a legion hand. But you killed like NCR. Like Hanlon. With mines, bombs, missiles. Killed legion along with the bear. Like a coward. Kills from a distance. If you were a legion, then NCR beat you. The West changed you. And there's a really fun little bit of history there. Yeah, so basically, uh, potentially a very large number, even all of the couriers wandering around uh, all of uh, post-apocalypse America were in fact Legion agents, and indeed a very good occupation to have uh, thoroughly infiltrated there, because they just wander everywhere, carry important messages, know all sorts of useful stuff. Yeah, very, very clever indeed if Caesar managed to infiltrate uh, pretty much every society in post-war America using a network of couriers. Very, very clever indeed. And, well, I'm going to say I was never a Legion agent. Honestly, I'm not sure how I know, because who knows whether I remember that or not. Maybe I'm just assuming. I know that now. Doesn't change what was done. The Legion who died here. Even if you were a Legion, you would answer for those deaths by Kaisar's law. And any chance you're willing to tell me more about how you and me know each other? Because so far you've only said that you followed me around, which is a little bit creepy, Ulysses. I knew all of you. Your name. Your road to 
to and from the Divide, what that meant for the Legion. We never spoke, knew you through your actions, knew you'd walked the West as I'd walked the East, learned different lessons, and I would never have discovered the Divide without you. And there we are, 90 XP for managing to get all six of the little kind of tucked away in conversation tree bits of information about my own past. Very, very nice indeed. Now, those recordings, because at this point I'm up to, uh, I'm up to four of them. Four out of the six. You scavenge words. Things I have no need of. No history there worth recounting. Scour the divide. Claw at it for meaning. But my words will give you no answer. Well, that's what he says for now, but I don't necessarily believe him. We'll get back to that in time. <laughs> they, I think they tell me where you were, things you did. That's true. That is what words do. And we can actually ask him about the ones we've already discovered, which is really, really damn cool, because we've discovered all the ones we're physically capable of discovering so far. So, the Twisted Hairs, your former tribe, yes indeed, over in Zion, the White Legs started imitating. Twisted Hairs are dead, lost at dry wells, died in Wolpus's smile. Won't discuss their fate with you, not now. Their past is mine to keep. Walk farther. See me face to face. You might earn more. Now let the words keep you without me adding to them. So yes, indeed, we're starting to learn more about his past by asking him about what we've heard in the tapes, which is pretty damn cool, and the big empty as well. I had. Did. It was madness. Ask them a question in anger. Not an answer. More than I expected. Answer told me what happened here at the Divide. The how of it. And that was enough. The tape has the telling of it. Don't need me adding to the questions already there. So he's not willing to actually, you know, give us much more information there. And anything else we can say? Yes, before I go any farther, maybe I can get some more answers out of you. You've seen the Divide. Walked it. Farther than I thought you would. Not sure how much farther you have in you. If you need answers, speak. You've earned them. Even if only you and I can carry them from here. The final little kind of branch we can go down, the package. Anything more you can tell me about that? You know what it was. It had the symbols of America on it. New markings from after the Great War. Thought it might be America come again. Promise of another future, another flag. Okay, so it wasn't just a bit of pre-war tech, there was something new going on here. It was a piece of machinery, military, holding memories, codes maybe. When it woke, made these sounds, words, when it spoke, the divide became fire. The ground tore apart like the skies. Through it all, kept calling out. Maybe calling for home. And where is that package now? Buried in the divide. Part of it now. Wherever it is, it's been silent. If it spoke again, We'd know. And what do you mean when it woke up? What woke it up? Machine couldn't speak by itself. Needed a terminal to access it. Like the terminals in the silos here. Or the machine with you. When it was connected, it started speaking. And the divide answered. So nothing more we can learn there, mostly. And we're about done with him. The cannon is miles long. It's really not. It's like a kilometre tops courier. Like, don't be a drama queen here. Right, how do I find you exactly? At the end of the divide. Through the trenches and wreckage. That's where you'll find me. A new home. Here. Amongst dead men. You and that machine. Keep your eyes on the tower that cuts the horizon. You'll find your way. 
Made it this far. Not much farther to go. There we go. It's a big, big, long discussion with uh, Ulysses, but to be honest, it's worth it because it's a great conversation. And uh, by the way, yeah, there's quite a lot of flipping marked men here, which is why I wanted to get the marked perk uh, last time, because... Uh, yeah, otherwise it can be a little bit on the difficult side to do this area. An extra 10% uh, damage against marked men will certainly help me out. As will 14 rockets. Right, straight into danger round here. Some of these guys are immediately extremely annoyed with me, unfortunately. But while I'm actually up here, I'm not sure they're going to be able to do much. I think there was actually someone tossing a grenade. That is the most impressive grenade throw of all time, but uh, sadly it's not going to be quite good enough. Oh, and when I say it's not going to be quite good enough, um, turns out it actually was. There's a guy right there. Right, they've all managed to make their way over to me then. Well, that's bloody good. Luckily, with that bonus 10% damage, I can actually do a pretty decent job against these guys. And actually, it's worth finishing these guys off as they actually come up here. So if they're going to come up here one at a time, that works better for me than bloody going down there and taking them on all in a big group. So if you want to do this, you go right the flip ahead. Yeah, where are you bastards? Who have we got sight of? Okay. Got sight of someone way over there. Not gonna be great, to be honest, but also not bad. Hang on, are you healing? I think that guy's in rads. Oh, yeah. Okay, that guy's in rads. So we've got ourselves a new flipping marked Superman over there. Good, good, good. Oh, bloody hell, and we've got a hunter come up with a flipping tri-beam shotgun or something. Uh, let's just see if we can stagger him. Good, we've got the gun out of his hands. And now, there we are. Bit of careful aim will take care of these bastards. I'm pretty sure I'm crippled, but I won't actually heal it just yet. More coming up yet? No. Okay, we're into caution. Good. So the first wave has come and been defeated. That really works for me, because sometimes they really refuse to show themselves in this section. And it's actually, uh, yeah, very much worthwhile actually luring a few of them up here, because picking them off, you know, in ones and twos on the roof is a lot easier. Oh, but I've upset somebody else yet. Okay, who else is flipping coming? You know what? That's fine. Bring them up one at a time. There's a mole rat. Okay, I'm not so desperately worried by them. Where's the rest of you? You're over there. Actually, if you're if you're over there, screw it. I might be able to... Oh, no, you're going the wrong way. Okay, you know what? I'm going to... Oh! Right. Okay, I see someone over there. Okay, no one seems to be firing at me right this second. I'm going to take this opportunity to actually start picking off the actual uh, warheads. Because once we've detonated the warheads, then that's going to... Oh, someone's annoyed at me for that. Once the warheads are gone, these guys don't have healing anymore. Now, if you can obviously, you know, pick off a warhead while someone's walking past it, that's marvellous. But, to be honest, I'm pretty happy with those just gone. Because there'll be some... Oh, I see you on the move. You're coming to investigate that. Might be able to... I want to say might be able to get a shot in. Actually, you know what? I just flipping did, despite the bloody sway. Right, at this point, they're all running around, and they have no idea where I am. And several of them actually look unarmed to me. Right, well, that flipping works. Right, some fire coming from down below. Where's that fire coming from? Okay. Don't know, but I'll gladly just put some red glare down there. That should take you out. Lovely. As you can see, we're doing a lot better than we used to against these guys now. That marked perk makes a big difference. There's one over there. Ah, you're firing up at me, are you? Good flipping luck, my good man. Oh, yeah. Not you to the ground as well. That'll hold you still. And boom. Nice. Okay. More fire coming from somewhere. Red glare's really starting to pay for itself. Now, hang on. Where's that fire coming from? Okay, there's fire coming from down below. Don't know exactly where. There's something over here as well. That might just be a second mole rat in these here ruins. I suspect it is. Hang on, if I just get a, a rocket straight through there. Yep, that's just a second mole rat. That's okay. <laughs> Got myself 9 XP for that. Two left. Ah, I think I see one over there. Yep, there you go, you stupid bastards. If we can knock you off your feet... That'd be even better. Yes, indeed. Lovely. Gotta love knocking them off the feet. And just two more should do you. Right. There's another one down. Very, very nice indeed. And one left down there somewhere. Okay, good. Good, good, good. This has gone all right. There might still be some in the building I haven't seen yet. When I loop over to this side, I might get visibility of some hanging out in that there building. Unless that was... 
Okay. No sign of movement. Okay, we might be doing alright here. Let's start slowly making our way down. Yeah. Caution. Not danger. Whatever's down there. Don't have a good shot at it right now. I may have to take on that last one directly. Oh! Okay, whatever it is, it's seen me. Fine. I'm going to back off over here. If you want to go down this little side route here, something very important in a duffel bag right at the end round here. Hang on, well, one bunch of meals. Not so important, to be honest, but... Okay, not this one. It's somewhere around here, damn it. I'm just going to go over to this thing in case someone bloody ambushes me, because someone might be... No, back into caution, we're all right for the time being. Ah, flashbangs. Flipping perfect timing, just in case you don't have many of them right now. Ah, here we are, right on the desk. Ulysses log number five. And I think, potentially, someone's getting very, very close there. Just a reminder, you can go home, courier. Every step I take towards Ulysses is proving him right. We've also got a wall safe back here. Crack that. Nothing major, but Doctor's bags are pretty precious at the time being, so sure, why not? Oh, there you are. I see you over there. That's okay. And just finish you off nice and quickly. Hopefully be able to put you into a nice bit of... Oh, blimey, managed to stagger me there before I staggered you. Oh, come on. Stangy bastard. There you go. Uh-oh. He's about to kill me, isn't he? Well, that's hilarious. You know what? This guy gets taken care of personally. Oh, no. Lender of volley. In we go. Well, he just kind of reloads. Now I run across here. And now, my good man. No, 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 no. No gun for you. Thank you, flipping very much. There we are. Now you don't have a gun anymore. Where the bloody heck? No, no, no. And all oh, your precious damage threshold for nothing. Screw you, you stupid bastard. Ah, that's why he was doing such a good job. He's got a flipping light machine gun. Damn good thing I'll be taking that, thank you. Now, probably at this point, I'm... Yeah, you know what? Screw it. I've got several doctor's bags. Start using them. Get my health bag with some nice meals ready to eat. Reduces weight and just a nice way of getting my health bag there. Right, don't need you right now. Pretty sure I've used all of you over here. Very, very nice indeed. Right, we should... Be safe. Yeah, life machine guns are bloody dangerous, though. Be careful of them. Just start working our way further and further down Dad? here. Hey, Dad! Check out this robot I found! Careful, Tommy. I've never seen a robot like that before. It might be dangerous. He's not dangerous. Look, he's hurt. Can we take him home, Dad? Maybe Mom can fix him. I don't know, son. What if someone comes looking for it? Please. He looks so lonely. Maybe if Mom fixes him, he can help her out around the garage. <sighs> All right, boy. But if he breaks anything, it's coming out of your allowance. Yay! He'll be just like Ralphie. Only this one's not a toy. So there we go. After he was shot, which we heard in a previous recording, he was picked up by Dad and his kid and fixed up in a garage. But why did you leave after that? Wistful beeping. Oh, you gave that up to continue Whitley's mission. Very proud beeping indeed. Was it all worth it though, Edie? Determined beeping, I'm guessing it was. And where was this, by the way? Happy beeping. Nice, a happy place. Good. And what's an Illinois? I've no idea what you're bloody talking about there, Edie. Happy beeping indeed. Apparently, Illinois is a happy, happy place. What's a Chicago? <laughs> Expository beeping. <laughs> ah, I gotta love Edie. Now, any sign of anything down here? No, I think we're okay for the time being. Good. Everything seems under control here. Right. Everything does indeed seem... I was literally just saying everything does indeed seem safe right now. Apparently it wasn't. Big question is, what the bloody hell just actually killed me? I've no bloody clue. I didn't hear any beeping. What the bloody hell was that? Hello? Is there a mine? Here or some... Oh, yes. Yes, there is. Okay, good. It's my best friend. Bloody satchel chargers. Of course the satchel chargers round here. Of course there bloody is. Mixed in with a whole bunch of junk that makes them really, really difficult to bloody see. Oh, bloody hell. Well, of course. Now, we're not done with the game being a troll just yet, though. If I recall correctly, we're going to have an ambush with two more of them spawning on the roof. 
in a minute. Uh, but there should be plenty of cover for that. There we go. In they come. Right, round here, round here, round here, round here. Get out of the way. Marvel. They can't get down. So if I can just get some distance between me and them, I should just be able to snipe them off with red glare. So this angle should be about right for me to head in this direction. They're going to shoot me in the back a few times, but that's fine. I should be able to heal that off pretty easily. There we go. Right. Now, this is probably a decent location over there. Yep, there's a marked man scout. Oh, there we go. Now we can just start taking some shots at these bastards. And just a few more over there. All right. One of them's dead. One of them's fallen off the roof. We're technically into hidden, so I think you're both dead. Yeah, for clearing out enemies at a distance, red glare is pretty bloody amazing. And that's not quite enough, sadly, to push me up to uh, level 9. As nice as it would be to be level 9. Right. Good. Good spot there. Now, don't rule out the possibility that's going to happen again. I don't remember another ambush with new enemies actually spawning in now, but screw it. It probably will happen regardless. Also, that looks like a... Yep. Let's just quickly start blowing up the bloody satchel charges that are bloody everywhere. There we go. Get them out of the way so we can climb up top here. Up top here starts being very, very bloody useful, because up here we've got a way through to a new little side area, but first just want to loot around here. <laughs> oh, I don't trust this much junk. There could be satchel charges in here I would never see in a million years. Right, all seems calm around this here campfire, and this is the route by which I can get upstairs into that building that those guys were sniping at me from earlier. So you are all, yeah, they're all dead, or rather, to be precise, they all ran out round to me. So that's lovely. I can't remember if there's anything good in here. I think it's just a... Ah, a couple of military shipping crates. Never turn them down, because, yeah, 12 rockets. Very useful. Like, I think you've seen now, yeah, with the marked perk and with some decent investment in explosives, together with, uh, yeah, the actual red glare, all of a sudden, this thing's pretty good at clearing out some enemies. But, before we go any further down the canyon... There's one more place I have to go, looping up here, because, yeah, basically, inside this canyon, there are four secrets, like, uh, little tapes and ED upgrades and whatever, and obviously, we do want to be getting all of those, so, just follow that, yep, I know, I know there's going to be more yet, don't you bloody worry, I figured that much out, right, avoid the rads up here, because we're, ah, we're technically above or close by to one of those things right now. Ah, wait, sorry, my mistake. I'm one too far over at this exact moment in time. Instead, up here, rather than actually uh, clambering up this way, I can just use this area for, if I can just get up to here, if the game doesn't... Nope, the game does object, never mind. And now I'm stuck in a rock, it's okay. All I want to do as a starting point is crack open this one, because obviously this opens the path forward into the next area. Lovely. Unsurprisingly, that's going to draw a little bit of attention. We've already seen the flares go up, in fact. And also, I may have just caused a very, very slight collapse of a building, so I need to go through some caves. Obviously, caves are a marvellous place to go. Now, as you probably guess, this next area is indeed full of a giant number of enemies that do indeed want to murder you. Except there's a really fun trick I've never really seen many people actually bothering to point out, which is, uh, let's just get the laser detonator ready and put it away for now. Uh, what I'm planning to do is basically say screw this area and run straight through it. Obviously, you know, good starting point for that is probably going to be do a stim pack to get my health maxed or close by to. Also, just do some flipping medics for a little bit of extra defense there. Beautiful damage resistance up by uh, 25 there. Admittedly, that's only a 25% damage reduction. It's not great to be honest, but it'll flipping do. And now I'm basically just going to start running. If I'm very lucky, I might actually survive this here run. So I'm basically just going to break round to the right here. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm doing that, because now all the enemies know where I am, etc, etc, etc. That's because basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take advantage of some interesting triggers that are going on here. Which is, I'm just going to trigger this here warhead, without getting too bloody close to it. Now I'm going to run over to it, and Edie, who I told to wait back over by the, um, the top of the tower, is going to catch up with me. 
And then she's going to play some music and then immediately get shot, unfortunately. Can't put that on, however, because that's copyrighted third-party music. And these days, YouTube's very, very strict and that sort of thing. Which is why I never have the radio on anymore. It used to be okay, but these days, YouTube's much harsher with it. And indeed, that gunshot sounded like they blew out your primary stabilizing jets. I can't believe you kept going after that. And indeed, of course... If you recall, the um, the very first trailer for uh, New Vegas had a little iBot being shot with a good old rifle, and that's exactly what you were seeing right there. It was a robot from the last bit of DLC getting shot. Very, very sad indeed. Well, probably anyway. In all fairness, you also find, like, the original game's ED also kind of having been shot in the courier's office in Prim. So it could have been either of them. Who bloody knows? I'm not sure if it's ever actually been uh, confirmed for certain. So you definitely didn't make it all the way to Navarro then. If I don't make the story the wrong way around, sorry, I thought we'd already had uh, confirmation that she'd been shot in a previous one, but maybe actually she picked up damage in some other way while on the way to Navarro, and then the shooting happened after being picked up by uh, the kid and the dad. I thought the kid and the dad picked up the robot and fixed the shooting damage, but maybe that's not true. And pained beeping and raiders her, dear old flippy. Oh, blimey! I want to trudge down and salvage you for scrap. I love you, you're marvellous. And that sounds very bad. Scared beeping. No time to talk. Let's be on our way. Indeed, let's be. Because now we've... No. Go through the actual flipping hole into the flipping area. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to very quickly now go into hidden. I'm still in caution right now and I've leveled up too. Marvellous. I am actually level 9. Good, good, good. Uh, now, explosives. Want to get this up a little bit more yet? 65. Important one. Uh, and let's also get guns up too, because I have been using... I've been using some guns. The um, kind of the shoulder-mounted machine gun thing's pretty good. And I've got a light machine gun as well. Marvellous. Now, go here. And what I want to do now is activate the... Okay, I've already activated it. So I've activated this here uh, fast travel location, Cave of the Abaddon. Now, what I now want to do is back out of this area. And there's a very particular reason for that, because uh, remember all those nasty, nasty soldier sorts that I actually uh, ran past earlier? They've despawned, all of them. Um, the game's got a weird thing in its sequence. I don't really know why it does this, but basically um, when you detonate that warhead and reach the, um, the little kind of marker for the Cave of the Abaddon, then the game immediately afterwards despawns all of the enemies in this area. I'm not sure if it's like to avoid, say, too many enemies in the same area or something, but basically all the guys in here now just immediately and totally despawn. Which is bloody convenient, because there's a whole bunch of stuff here I want to explore, and some of those enemies are dug in pretty bloody tight. Also, I want to just quickly blow this up. Very, very nice indeed, because actually I'll come back to that, because there's going to be some rads there for a second. Uh, but yeah, basically now, this area is up for grabs. Very, very good. Including a nice fridge here. Good old irradiated fridge. So yeah, those guys would have made my life a pain. I've had to have cleared out this building of like three guys simultaneously or kind of, you know, fought my way up to there and sniped down at them or something. But fortunately, I do not need to... There are still mines though. The game doesn't clear out the mines. Oh, this is interesting. I've just hit a really weird bug in the game. Uh, okay, so basically New Vegas gets confused when it's loading. The last autosave I had was the moment when I reached the Cave of the Abaddon, which is also when I last leveled up. So... I've just redone the level, and it's given me the skill points for level 9, but it skipped me up to level 10. Because uh, it's got confused and given me the level up twice at this point. I didn't mean for it to do that, but screw it, I'm not going to turn it down. So I've now got the skill points of a level 9 character, but the perks of a level 10 one. Because everything's confusing. Alright, fine. You know what? I'll flipping take it. I feel short changed. Ooh, demolition expert. Ooh, yes. You know what? I think I'm liking the demo expert. I think I'm liking all of that. Yeah, screw it. Let's go for that some more. Actually, not. Just double check if there's anything else first before I kind of, you know, click done or anything. Nah, nothing better than that. Screw it. Take it. Right. Now back off and this time drop a save so I don't accidentally do that again. Actually, I wonder if I could keep farming that. And theoretically, if I was just to keep actually now reloading that auto save by dying to that mine over and over, I could just actually get myself effectively infinite perks, or rather get myself maxed out on perks, but uh, still with the skill points. Actually, that would be a terrible idea, because then I'd have the skill points of a really low-level character, and have no more ways to actually level up. Okay, you know what? Let's just not do that. Instead, let's just blow this thing up again, and this time start paying more bloody attention to, you know, mines. Yeah, obviously, I see it this time. This time, it looks really bloody obvious right there, but I didn't see it last time, so it's fine. Right, hopefully... <laughs> Let's just take this a little bit more slowly and carefully here. Hopefully, there's no more flipping mines. Keep 
everything pointing down here for more flipping mines. Because, yeah, we wanted to come into this building regardless because, well, the downside is there's no corpses. So I can't loot the corpses. The game just literally despawns them. They don't just, like, auto-die or anything. Right, round here. All right. Everything looks under control now. And when I say everything looks under control, I just walked into another one. Good. Now that's good for your basic looting. What we actually want is the building just to its right. Just cut in here to the collapsed building. Go up to the end. And you may have already seen it at the end there. We've got ourselves one tape. And we get 90 XP. For the fact that is now the entirety of Ulysses' logs. So, while I'm just quickly going around and looting. And hopefully not dying to more bloody satchel charges. Let's get the rest of Ulysses' story here. Because, yeah. Listening to all six of these... Very, very important. Now, this was the one we actually found the fifth, so let's listen to it the fifth. The white legs, meant to show respect, bribe me for Kaiser's favor, echoing mannerisms and words. Showed them tech gashes, taught them the workings of chamber and powder, spoke of Kaiser's pride in those that used such things. Lies. And... And then... They tried to honor me, not the Legion. They brought me before the campfire one night, showed me how they changed themselves, how they wore their hair now. It was like my entire dead tribe in the firelight, teeth grinning red in the dark, eager corpses, blood-covered ghosts. They had taken my braids. The way of the twisted hairs, as if it showed they were like me, of me. While every knot in their braids spoke of raping, violence, and ignorance of what the knots meant. They thought to show respect, defiled it. Lost myself in trying to read the braids they wove, when I remembered they had put no meaning in it. They had no history of what it meant. They didn't even know the insult and the twists, knots. And Triwells came rushing back. The white legs circled like that. It was like looking at the dead of my tribe, reborn as ghosts, hateful, hungry, bowing to Kaisar. Another history, gone, carried by me. Alone. There we go. Why the white legs have the hairstyle they do. They were trying to imitate Ulysses and he wasn't best pleased by it, unfortunately. Not in the slightest. I didn't up here behind that uh, nuke we detonated. There is iBot number four. Very, very nice indeed. And that gets me lovely. Increasing my damage with beam weapons by plus five. Basically, that just affects all the same weapons as uh, the laser commander perk does. And ED also gains plus five damage while he's your companion. Very, very bloody useful indeed. Admittedly, I'm not using much in the way of beam weapons. Uh, the tri-beam laser rifle would count. Actually, you know what? That's actually pretty bloody useful. I might actually show that off momentarily. That actually might be a good opportunity for that. In fact, it is indeed a new day now. ED, would you be willing to fix this thing up for me by any flipping chance? Come on, let's have some fresh everything. Yes, indeed, it's a brand new day. Repair this weapon. Thank you very much indeed. Much better. So DPS on this thing, 149 now. Very, very nice indeed. And of course, the final one of Ulysses' tapes. Have you ever wanted to speak to history? Just to know the why of it? I don't. Not any longer. There's old stories about gods and men. Past history into myth. For the gods, they're like children. Petulant, cruel. Those were the voices of the big empty. The past. Couldn't leave well enough alone. Had to ask. Had to ask the why of it. Their answers were madness and power stronger than me. Would take a hundred Elijahs. Someone tougher than him or I. To best of them in their dome. They didn't know why they were there. What had led to that point? Their name. 
America. It wasn't just a flag to them. It was a place, an idea they had cared for once. They told me what it was like to grow in that world. All they had done to lift it up, protect it. They didn't know it was gone. That, yet, they had cared once before forgetting their history. As they were talking, kept seeing the career's shadow behind them, giving each their words weight. History cast aside, a home left behind. I listened, I asked, was there anything left? Anything that still carries America's voice? And they told me I had already been there. I and one other, walking right out of history, deeper than we knew. They told me what lies in the heart of the Divide, what can be found there, and the words to awaken it, and the one to speak them. And there we go. Ooh, I like that final one, because Old World Blues people generally remember as a very, very... Funny, charming, silly sci-fi adventure. But underneath it, there's a ridiculously dark story. Ludicrously dark and sinister. So much horrific, horrific stuff. Which the game doesn't really kind of draw attention to. Which is probably its strength, really. It's just there if you want to find it. But yeah, Ulysses very, very much aware of it. Horrified by it. And of course, also completing the circle. Ulysses confirming, as a sort of hint at that during the he came and he went little mini quest in Old World Blues. Yeah, him coming in was what made the brains wake up and kicked off the events of Old World Blues. Because previously, they were happy just being stuck in their little thought circle bubble thingy that uh, evil Dr. Mobius had trapped them in. But no, they were woken up because Ulysses came and spoke of the outside world and of history to them. Ooh, it's a nice final one, that one. I'm glad we've got that one. So there we are. That's all six of those. And indeed, there's only one flipping upgrade for Edie left as well. And for that, we just need to clamber up into this building over here. And I have got... Ah! Discovered all the locations in the Divide is apparently a little achievement I might well get, given I'm exploring fairly thoroughly at the minute. If we just loop round here, just over to here. Is this a new location? Uh, no, okay, not marked its own location. Sewer grate to the municipal sewers. Very, very nice indeed. There's a computer, which if I recall correctly, is completely pointless. Ah, yes, while it doesn't do anything, I do recall it just, yeah, leads into one of the very, very dark moments, of course, that's just, uh, sitting quietly there over an Old World Blues as well. Do not engage the protesters outside the construction zone. The political office has something planned for them. You better not screw it up. And if we just skip forward to the memo, the general is chief liaison officer to the big MT research facility. He and his team are paying us a visit to collect our guests and take them someplace where they can do some good for their country. So, yes indeed. Unfortunately, it wasn't just uh, random Chinese citizens taken away to be experimented on at the big MT. It was also random protesters who were just rounded up and then shipped off for experimentation. Very, very bloody dark indeed. <laughs> Just, yeah, this DLC kind of wanted to... I don't know, maybe they felt like not enough people had acknowledged how bloody dark Old World Blues actually was. So they just wanted to, you know, make sure we got the bloody point when it actually came to wrapping things up in Lonesome Road. Right, into the sewers we go, where we have got ourselves some flipping uh, tunnelers to take out. And hopefully, this new shotgun will do the job. Right, already in caution here. Prepare. 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 Continue preparing. There we are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is doing good work. And when I say good work, none of them are actually dead yet. Uh, you're almost dead. You're almost dead. Two. Just managed to avoid that one. Okay, just screw it. Go, 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 go. No. Didn't quite kill you. Okay. Got you this time. Kill abominations. Lovely. Right, it was only two. Sorry, I thought it was three in here. Tunnelers, no bloody joke. Uh, right, through here. I think that's your lot, isn't it? And that's more about to pop out. No. Good. No, good. Right, this is basically just a single room because at the end here, you probably already spotted him. Of course, it is ED number five, the fifth and final one. Lovely. And just grab this one. 
And we have got ourselves rank 5, increasing my accuracy in VATS as long as Edie is a companion. And Edie is also more accurate as well. Beautiful. And I also get myself 450 XP. I think you saw there for just a second. Because I've actually completed the uh, camaraderie little quest. Oh, sorry, no, not camaraderie. I thought it was educated. Okay, and maybe misremembering what the names of the quests are. I thought it was educated. Maybe that's the quest, but the perk is camaraderie. <laughs> I don't flipping know. Right, let's just get out of here. That's literally all I needed from this area. So that is all the logs and all the ED little upgrade circuit boards. And that leaves well. Now here's another bit I've been waiting for. To my mind, now the most difficult bit following on from the elevator itself. We need to go through the cave of the Abaddon. It's going to be flipping full of bloody tunnelers. Uh, as well as, uh, yeah, an actual tunneler queen. Who's even faster and more flipping dangerous. So... Couple of different plans I've got for that. Laser shotgun is no longer one of them, because that didn't even do that well against bloody two of those guys. Instead, just for fun, I've got myself a plan, which is I've been kind of stockpiling something, specially. 25 flashbangs. <laughs> okay, so flashbangs can cause tunnelers to frenzy. I would love to cause some mass flipping tunneler frenzying. That'd be hilarious. And to help out with that, I'm actually going to activate my first Stealth Boy. Right. In we go. Nice and invisible, but otherwise not really that stealthy. To be honest, like, my sneak skill is incredibly poor, but screw it. Right, in we go. Let's just loop up here and see if I can find myself a nice cluster of these guys. I'm going to get a whole bunch of them together. Come on, I want a whole bunch of them together. Uh, okay. You know, how much is it going to cost? For me to just basically toss a whole bunch of these things. Because I've actually got some decent skill. Screw it, let's just give it a go. I might retry this a couple of times so I get a fun result. Because this is kind of hilarious. Uh, that one's not working. You're close by to me. Right, there we go. So let's just toss you. And then hopefully go for a frenzy. Okay, that's a couple of cripples. Do we have a frenzy? Come on, frenzy. That's another couple of cripples. There's a chance of frenzy. I'm not sure like exactly what- There we go! We've got at least one frenzy going on. So hopefully now, they'll go for each- Do you want to go for each other? Okay, some of them are going for each other. Right now they're kind of blinded. Hopefully that'll draw the attention of the others over. Now what's the deal with these two? So now there's these two that have been temporarily stunned. Completely stunned and blinded and whatever. I'm just going to toss another one. I've got all of these bloody things. I may as bloody well. Let's just keep hopefully getting a few more frenzies going on over here. You're just kind of going on over there. Yep, that's another frenzy. So one of them is in a frenzy. That guy over there, those two are down. But they're now... Okay. He's now attacking his friend, but they've decided they can't be bothered to attack back. Which is, you know, that is real friendship right bloody there. Now, up here, see if I can get over to the queen as well. So several of them are killing each other right now. I'm also getting the XP for it for no well explained reason. Ah! Now this is what I wanted to bloody see. Hulking Tunneler right there. Probably both of you will be in range for this. Tunneler Queen hasn't spawned yet up there. Venomous one over there. abso flipping lootly. And there's probably one more over there as well. 40%. Screw it. Give it a go. Just while I'm invisible, just toss in all the bloody flashbangs. That is a bit of crippling. A few other bits and pieces. You've also been knocked down already. One of them's already definitely down. I think actually the radius on this is ridiculous already. Right. And you're now running over there. Okay, that's loads of frenzies. That's what I wanted to get. Okay, that is a load of flipping frenzies right now. Good. Oh, dear. Okay, I've just actually upset one of them. I've just upset several of them. Luckily, several of them are going for each other. So this might not go completely wrong yet. <laughs> okay, where's the queen? Where's the bloody queen? We might just have a chance yet. Okay, another one of them's killed... All the others, for the time being. Screw it. I'm just going to start tossing in these. Screw you all. Stealth boys worn off. I'm actually being hit by something. What's going on? Where's the queen? Where's the queen? I'm not sure why the queen hasn't actually uh, spawned in yet. <laughs> Maybe I can actually win at this point. Hang on. We've got ourselves... Oh, no. I need to get around the corner first. Uh, excuse me. You're almost dead. How are you guys doing, by the way? You're hulking. Okay, yeah, that's not looking so hot, to be perfectly honest. Uh, right, just jump out the... Oh, gosh darn it. Just one shot at me. Okay, I want to do that better, damn it. I also want to get the queen. I totally want to get the queen. Now I know, actually, I can do it with far fewer because the splash radius on them is ludicrous. Right. One stealth boy, and now I just know, yeah, now the splash radius is stupid. I can just basically start tossing these things around. Uh, 
and for the most part it should be okay and we'll get a good few friends off on that so we got some of you over there right you and how did you know where i was i don't know how you knew where i was there okay there's some good stuff there excuse me all of you go for each other please thank you very much not sure how they detected me i'm not sure if like you know you're hard to detect when you're in that mode these guys are now just going for each other over there these guys are going to start spawning in over here. Screw it. Why not? And go. And go. And I'm hurting myself at this point. Apparently these things do actually do some significant damage. Right. Need to flipping. My explosives is being drained. Okay. I think I'm being hit by a special type of poison here. That's hilarious. Right. Let's just get some flipping healing going on there. Uh, hop up here if we can. And hop up faster. Right. And go. Go. Oh yeah, the Tunnel of Queen is definitely out on the field and annoyed. Right, get in here. Jump out of here. We've got some definitely good stuff going on here now. And just keep tossing those uh, flipping things in. Go, go. I've sort of fallen out there. <laughs> okay, good. This is good. And now, oh yeah. Oh, flipping. Yes, they're flipping ganging up on the Queen. And this game is slowing down. Oh, blimey heck, this is perfect. The tunnelers are all going for each other. I'm pretty sure I've actually frenzied the queen at this point. Which one is that? Yeah, that's the queen. Oh, that's so perfect. <laughs> they're all just going for the queen. And if they're all going for the queen, that means they're all just looped over there because no one's bothering to deal with me. And that means I've found a use for my 10 million mad bomber grenades. Do 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 Okay, just keep tossing those over there. They're marvellous. And a few more frenzy jet. Just keep tossing them over. Nice. Anyone else? I think there's like one left. Hulking tunnel. Nice. I think that's actually the last one at this point. <laughs> oh, that's exactly what I wanted. The queen being flipping uh, frenzied. Right. Last one. My good man. And down you go. I think that's your lot, isn't it? Yep. We've cleared out the ca Oh, no, we haven't. No, we flipping haven't. There's more over there. They just don't know I'm actually here yet. <laughs> okay, there's two over there that presumably were, like, survivors. Okay, well, you know what? We're going to clear those guys out, too, because screw it. Why the bloody hell not, eh? These are hulking and hulking. I want to get to the Queen's corpse, damn it. I do actually want to get to the Queen's corpse, if at all possible. So let's just get some damage on these bastards. There we go. That's... Okay, for some reason, they've decided to, like, moonwalk over to me rather than actually fighting me. And just keep staggering them with more and more bullets in various parts of their bodies. And that should be the last one. Yeah? Is that your lot? Is that your lot? Lovely. Also, wait, hang on. What's happened to my... What's happening to my XP right now? My XP's doing something really weird. Which is, it seems to be... Is my XP stuck? Hang the flip on here. My XP's... Mark does... Okay. It doesn't look like it's stuck, but also there's... Ah, that's Edie over there. <laughs> My enhanced sensor focus, meaning I can detect Edie from further away. Please tell me the queen hasn't despawned. It would be a terrible tragedy if the queen despawned before I could get to her. That's the... No, I think she has. Tragically, I think the queen has uh, despawned. But I have managed to completely clear out the cave of the Abaddon. Generally, I would recommend just running straight through this. Like, you know, there's a good chance you'll just make it through. <laughs> So, uh, you know what? It's probably worth doing it that way. But, I'll tell you what, just using flashbangs for the mass frenzy is hilarious. Especially if you just get lucky. Because the queen is pretty evenly matched against, like, everyone else, like, put together. And then they'll all cluster, and then you can just, like, toss explosives on them or whatever. And generally, that's just hilarious. Anyway, let's just flipping get over here and have a quick heal, as I may as well visit the auto dock as I've actually cleared out the room. And out we go into the buried buildings. If I recall correctly, there might be a couple of guys up top of me here. But at this point, we're very close by to the next big revelation from Ulysses. And as, in fact, Ulysses sometimes does speak a little bit at length. I don't mind, because his voice acting is bloody amazing. But also, what the bloody hell's... I feel like Edie should have caught up with me through the load zone, but whatever. <laughs> Edie will catch up with me automatically the next time it's important to the plot for Edie to catch up with me, so that's fine. We will pick this up next week, ladies and gentlemen. We're actually getting fairly close to the end already, because I think we've got... Yeah, we've got the final big area to go through, Ulysses' temple, and then a little bit of stuff after that point. So I always said this was going to be a fairly short series. We've probably only got like a couple more parts to go, to be honest. And then I've got something else planned. Another little thing I've been meaning to look at for some time. So we will get to that in due time, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. This has been Fallen New Vegas, Lonesome Road. Thank you very much, and goodbye. 
You know, I really hope we've agreed to open borders with Japan, by the way. Otherwise, they have basically just invaded. I may have picked the wrong fight over... Yep. And my sisters, of course, have got even more flipping high-tech, though mysteriously still completely dependent on, you know, an aqueduct. Now, I'm not saying your entire army is mostly already dead, but it kind of actually is.